Oh, today we have a doozy among doozies. In the house, we have the Canon R7, the Nikon Z, Z30, the Canon R10, and the little Sony ZV-E10. That's right, I have four of the most popular APS-C cameras on the market today. I also have the most popular virus on the market for the last two years currently in my body. So uh, we should do this uh, video real quick. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a different day because yesterday I didn't feel quite good enough to do this, but I think I'm on the mend. I don't know how this thing goes, and I have my uh, trusty ginger ale here. Am I right? But first, I want to say a big shout out to B&H Photo for supplying most of the cameras for this comparison. Those guys, they were my favorite camera store in the United States before they started working with me. And by working with me, I mean I just asked them, hey, can you lend me some cameras? And they said, sure. They didn't even tell me to mention them in the videos. They're just, they're so great. And there's a Payboo credit card. Again, they haven't told me to say this, but you can save the tax. If you live in the United States and you sign up for their credit card, you can save the tax on all of the gear you buy there. That would save me hundreds of thousands of dollars. It makes me want to live in the United States. So go shop there. They are good people. And I also want to say any of these cameras could work for you depending on your needs. I'm not here to say one brand is better than the other. I own cameras from all of these brands. The Canon, Nikon, Sony. I also have Panasonic and Olympus. I mean, the channel is called Camera Crisis after all, because, you know, midlife crisis. I started a YouTube channel and also I can't choose between my cameras. And I should also say, this is uh, going to be video. We're not going to talk about photos in this particular. This is just image quality, image comparison from the cameras. When it comes to photos, the Canons have a faster mechanical burst rate, mechanical shutter burst rate, and they also have a nice EVF. So that will be very helpful photos. Full photos? Helpful for photos. I'm still ill. I got the brain fog. But all of these cameras can take nice photos, but it will be easier with Canons. We're here to talk about video. And it should be noted that the Canon R7 is in a class above these other three cameras when it comes to specs and price. So uh, I just wanted to throw it in here because I know a lot of people will be debating this camera among the APS-C lineup. I am using the kit lenses for all of these cameras in my test, but I would strongly recommend you get better lenses faster lenses because uh, the Nikon and the Sony, they have third-party lenses like the Viltrox 13mm f1.4, which I will be reviewing soon. Fantastic for that. And the Canon either adapt the EF glass or uh, get some of that expensive RF glass and get some lower f-stops. The kit lens will get you by, but if you really want good footage, you're going to have to upgrade your lenses from the kit lenses, but that's what we have in these tests, so that's what I'm gonna show. So let me just show you everything in auto settings straight out of the box. Say you're a newbie, you wanna turn on your camera, put it in auto, and see what it looks like? Well, here you go. Hi guys, we have the Canon R10, the Nikon Z, Z30, the ZV-E10, ZV-E10, and also the Canon R7. I figure since I have them all here, why not just put them up against each other for a little footage test? Everybody is on all auto settings. This is just to show you what the cameras will do out of the box if you put it in their automatic mode. So uh, this, of course, these cameras can do better than this and we will also test that. But right now, I will just put it up side by side, all auto settings. Hold on, let me get my little color checker here to make it look more professional. The Canons are going to be a little tighter because their kit lenses aren't quite as wide as the Nikon and the Sony, plus their crop factor is 1.6 as opposed to 1.5 of the Nikon and the Sony. So right now in the screens, I mean they all look pretty good. Now, of course, I will show you how I would use all of the cameras in the modes that they have. I'll do C-Log3 for the Canon R7, HLG3 for the ZV-E10, the flat profile for Nikon, and I will also use the uh, HDR mode in the Canon camera, and let's see how that looks.
very handsome if I do say so myself. And while we're at it, I showed you clips of each of the cameras as I would use them in the studio at the very beginning, back yesterday when I filmed this. So let's put that up side by side. So now let's look at a little dynamic range test. And since Gerald Undone refuses to give me his Xyla 21, I don't know why, he should just give it to me. I had to come up with uh, a very unscientific way to test it. So what I did was I put myself in a very backlit situation and I exposed for the sky and I just tried to save the image. So first I will show you what it looks like straight out of camera and then I will show you the image that I tried to bring back in post. Now, as you might expect, the 10-bit C-Log3 Canon R7 fared the best, uh, but the uh, ZV-E10 and the uh, Nikon Z, Z30, uh, they did pretty well. The Canon uh, uh, R10 seemed to have a little difficulty. Even though I was using the HDR 10-bit, uh, I wasn't able to save that footage quite as well. So uh, in my very unscientific test, I would say that the R10 is the... Uh, worst in the bunch and uh, the R7 is of course the best. And now let's do some stability tests. Only Canon R7 has actual IBIS in body image stabilization. It also has digital stabilization that you can throw on top of that. And uh, the other three, they only have digital stabilization. Now the uh, Sony ZV-E10 has an extra trick up its sleeve and that is it can record the gyroscopic data, run that through the free program Catalyst Browse and your footage comes out gimbal-like at least in my opinion. So uh, let's just check out the stabilization now. Now you did see in the stability test the Canon R7 losing focus on me, which was very surprising. I am assuming I must have touched the back screen with my finger, you know what I mean? Because Canons, you never expect them to lose focus. But I do know that Chris and Jordan had some trouble with the R10 in terms of autofocus. So rest assured, I will test the crap out of the two cameras for um, when they do, when I'm doing their in-depth reviews to see if there are any problems with the autofocus. I'm assuming there are not. And even if there are, I bet Canon will put in updates. But anyway, I can't, I can only test what I test. It lost focus for a second. So uh, stay tuned to the rest of my tests uh, in upcoming videos. And then we will figure out together 
if the autofocus is reliable as Canon always has been. Now let's do a low light test. One of the most requested things on YouTube is always a low light test. This is a very practical one just out in my backyard under very dim conditions that keep getting dimmer and dimmer and we are on kit lenses that can only go down to f 3.5 so this is very difficult on the cameras and it is already starting at a very low light situation and I use the best low light mode in each of the cameras in my opinion anyway from all of my tests I used the uh, flat profile for the Nikon Z30, HLG3 for the ZV-E10 and I also use HLG3 for both the R7 and uh, the R10. Now, the R7 does record C-Log3, but C-Log3 doesn't do great if it's not exposed properly. Any log profile will be very noisy and very grainy if it doesn't have any kind of light to deal with. So uh, the standard profiles and the log profile, not as good as the uh, PQ profile. So uh, it's 10 bit anyway. So uh, it, it's the best one that during my test. So, so let's just show it. And of course, we have the rolling shutter test. There's a lot of people very upset about rolling shutter, and I get it. You know, so there are people who definitely bad rolling shutter will ruin their footage. They're doing lots of whips and pans, and they're, they're filming race cars and stuff. And in that case, probably none of these cameras are for you, but some are worse than others. So uh, let's check it out. Now the ZV-E10 and the R10 are quite bad. Maybe equally bad, maybe the ZV-E10's a little worse, but they are both terrible for rolling shutter. So do what you can to avoid the rolling shutter on those guys. Now with the ZV-E10, Catalyst Browse will eliminate a lot of that rolling shutter if you run it through. And also if you just up your shutter speed on either camera, that will help reduce the rolling shutter. You can also shoot in 1080, but anyway, the Nikon was surprisingly very good for its price. I mean, it's still noticeable, but it competes basically with the R7 for the rolling shutter, and it, both of those are much better than the ZV-E10 and the R10. Still, you can see it on all of them, but uh, R7 and uh, Nikon, definitely better. Oh, and you can also use a gimbal, which will help a lot with rolling shutter. How about some sexy slow motion footage? Let's have at it. All these cameras can shoot in 1080 at 120 frames per second. It's all pretty soft, but you put on some sharpening there and, and it's okay, you know? Like I use the 120 all the time in these cameras and I find it to be acceptable by the time you put it on a 4K timeline and it gets upscaled and put out on YouTube, I find it looks pretty good. Oh, I should mention both Canons kept eye detect autofocus in 120 frames per second, which is great. There is no sound. Uh, the Nikon and the Sony had sound in, at 120 frames per second, but uh, they just did a zone focus. So uh, the Canons kept up with the eye autofocus, which is pretty cool. Now the R10 and the R7 have a 4K 60 mode. On the R10, it is cropped. On the R7, it is cropped if you want to use the 4K fine, the sharper mode, and then it has a full readout of 4K 60 that is line skipped and will be a bit softer. So uh, let's check that out and we'll put it in comparison against uh, the Sony and the Nikon doing 1080 60p.
Finally, we should talk about overheating and battery life. Now, unfortunately, this is where the Nikon really falls short. And it's a shame because as you see from the tests, it is quite a great camera, but it consistently overheats in 4K at 25 minutes. Now, hopefully that could be changed in a firmware update. I am hoping for that anyway, because I really, really like the camera, but for a lot of the things I've been doing, like I've been shooting this for more than 25 minutes, so the camera would have shut down on me by now. And the other cameras, no overheating problems at all. As long as you put the ZV-E10 in its high heat mode, uh, all three cameras will run until their battery runs out. And uh, let me get the stats on that. So the R10 ran for 82 minutes and then the battery was exhausted. The uh, ZV-E10 ran for 90 minutes till the battery became exhausted. And uh, the R7 ran for a ridiculous two hours and 30 minutes. This is all in 4K, 4K fine for the R7 and 4K for the other guys. So very impressive for the R7 on battery life. In fact, I'm pretty impressed with the other two as well. You know, 82 minutes for the R10 and 90 minutes for the uh, ZV-E10. You can't complain. When you see the size of those batteries, it's surprising that it goes that long. So there you go. Pick your favorite. Tell me what it is in the comments below. And uh, I don't care which one you like. I have affiliate links for all of them. You know what I'm saying? So click on them. Make me stinking stinking rich. Since you're still here, why don't you check out this video where my voice sounded much, much less sexy because I wasn't sick in this video. So uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.